how Mikel Arteta used Alexander Lacazette as a false nine to unlock West Ham's defensive shape. So for Martinelli's goal, which put Arsenal into the lead, we saw Arsenal do what they had struggled to do throughout the rest of the game, which was break the lines of play, which just means get the ball in behind West Ham's midfield line. Many teams like Manchester City will try to do this by feeding the ball into one of their advanced midfielders sitting between the lines, but Arsenal used Alexander Lacazette, and I'll come on to not only how they eventually succeeded, but also how West Ham, throughout large parts of the game, managed managed to nullify Arsenal's ball progression. But before I get into that, for cheap good quality football jerseys, retro jerseys and tracksuits, go over to www.jerseyfifa.com, a link will be left in the description, and use code ALANTISFOOTBALL to get 5% off. So from the start of the game, Arsenal set up in a 4-2-3-1, with West Ham also using the 4-2-3-1 system. In possession, Arsenal would move to a 2-3-5 shape, with Tierney pushing forward high up the pitch down the left side, as Tommy Yashu, the right back, would hold a deeper, narrower position, creating a second narrow line of three in front of the two centre-backs. Ahead of that deep unit of five, Saka would hold his width on the right side, whilst Martinelli would drift inside into the left-sided half space, vacating space on the left flank for Tierney to push into. We would also see Odegaard sit in the right-sided half space, with Lacazette dropping off a lot from the forward line. Now, we do see strikers do this a lot. Harry Kane is a great example of a striker who drops off from the forward line, looking to receive the ball, turn and play a forward pass into the final third. However, Kane usually drops just to receive the ball, whereas Lacazette Lacazette drops and holds his position. Kane is a deeper lying forward, whilst Lacazette was playing the role more of a false nine, similar to Firmino, with both players playing more like attacking midfielders in their respective systems. However, despite Arteta's Manchester City-esque possession shape, West Ham in the first half did an excellent job of stopping Arsenal progressing the ball out of their half. Moyes' side would sit in a 4-5-1 shape with Lanzini and Bowen either side of Fulnals, Rice and Suchek. When the ball got switched to the right side, we would see Fulnals push out of the midfield line, creating a temporary 4-4 two, closing down the space for White to move into, while simultaneously cutting off the pass into Partey. West Ham's narrow midfield four also made it hard for Arsenal to work the ball in between the lines, with Lanzini and Bowen sitting tight to their central midfielder on their inside, forcing Arsenal wide of their defensive shape. Arsenal struggled to break through West Ham's man-to-man -man press in their own half, and this was because their movement and passing wasn't quick or direct enough. A great example of this was when Ramsdale did well to play a forward pass out of his own box into Lacazette, who laid the ball off for Xhaka and from here Tierney should be making a bursting run down the left side giving Xhaka a forward passing option. To Xhaka's frustration Tierney remained static forcing Arsenal to go back and have to break through West Ham's defensive shape again. In the first half it would be fair to say that Arsenal didn't create much of substance which can be seen as up until the 40th minute Arsenal had an XG of just 0.34 with West Ham recording just 0.06. Arsenal's best opportunities came from long shots with Lacazette forcing a save from Fabianski from the edge of the box with Martinelli on a able to put the rebound in and Tierney hitting the bar with a volley from outside the box. But Arsenal did manage to break down West Ham in the second half but before I come on to that just a reminder I do have a Patreon so if you do want exclusive content which is two extra videos per week plus a weekly newsletter then click the link in the description and for £5 a month you can sign up and help support the channel. So the first Arsenal goal did come from an incisive pass from deep into Lacazette. See here Arsenal switch play from right to left and Gabriel carries a ball out. Because Arsenal have switch play quickly and efficiently, West Ham don't have the time to shift over to their right and so their shape becomes disorganised and space develops between Rice and Suchek, opening up a vertical passing lane into Lacazette and Gabriel does very well to firstly see the pass and then play the pass quickly, progressing the ball into the West Ham half. Once Lacazette is able to turn with the ball we can see that because Tierney has pushed forward down the left side, Kufal has been drawn out which creates a space between Kufal and Dawson, giving Martinelli the opportunity to make a darting run from the half space in behind West Ham's back line. Lacazette's pass is perfectly weighted and Martinelli, reminiscent of Thierry Henry, raises past Kufal and Dawson and opens up his body to slot the ball into the bottom corner. Arsenal then got a penalty with Kufal receiving a second yellow in the process and despite Lacazette missing the penalty, West Ham was still way out of the game as with 10 men, Arsenal were able to dominate possession for the rest of the game. Antonio was moved to right back as West Ham sat off in a 4-4-1 shape. Smith Rowe added a second after an excellent count Counter, led by Saka, whose pass in the middle third to Smith Rowe to advance the attack was perfectly weighted, and Smith Rowe's shot, whilst on the dribble around the box, was superb. He hit it low and hard into the bottom right corner. 
Although West Ham did defend well for much of the game, they didn't really have any attacking threat. I thought that David Moyes should have targeted Arsenal's lack of aerial ability in the back line with Ben White by playing long balls into Antonio and Suchek. Instead, we saw West Ham trying to play through Arsenal's 4-4-2 defensive shape. However, West Ham are far better when they play direct and transition the attack quickly, with Fournals, Lanzini and Bowen being excellent carriers of the ball, and Antonio providing the off-the-ball movement in behind. I also think that Moyes should have instructed Masuaku and Kufal to put in more crosses from deep into the box in order to use Suchek and Antonio's aerial ability against Ben White and Kieran Tierney. Nevertheless, despite West Ham's lack of offensive pressure, Arsenal did well to carve out a victory. And it now seems like Arteta has a system and a style of play which is well defined and one which works well without Aubameyang featuring in the starting 11. I did do a video which came out just a few days ago on why Aubameyang was the right man at the wrong time for Arsenal so I'll leave that linked in the description below for you to check out but if you haven't already remember to subscribe to the channel, click the bell for notifications, give the video a like, sign up to my Patreon for exclusive content and go to the description for more videos as well.